Hey folks, Art Man, look what I've done. I've gone and joined the circus. Well, not really, but the circus is a great place to host this week's FYE. That's right, I'm hosting. Put those seats in their upright positions. We're not just clowning around here, folks. <coughs> FYE is going to fly you to the Caribbean for a little music. As Brendan Fraser rocks on with Airhead. Turn that damn noise down! Macaulay Culkin is getting even with Dad. I always beat him in chess and trivial pursuit in basketball. We and TV dad Bob Saget gets even with kids. I think of them as smaller people that just aren't fully programmed yet. It's all coming up on FYE. Hey folks, welcome to FYE. Art Man in Santa Barbara, California at Circus Vargas. Just one of the over 100 stops this circus makes. They do a total of like 600 shows. It's crazy. Trapeze artists, uh, the wheel of death. They got people balancing on each other and jumping around and spinning and doing all sorts of crazy circus things. It's nuts. It's not quite underway yet. So for now, let's take a look at the new Ted Danson Macaulay Culkin flick. Why not? What's it called? Getting Even With Dad. Getting Even With Dad. Let's check it out. Macaulay Culkin. Let's have a little uh, talk, all right? Macaulay Culkin and so Ted Danson are getting down to business as a dysfunctional father and son in the comedy Getting Even With Dad. Danson plays Ray, an ex-con whose estranged son, Timmy, re-enters his life. Timmy gets even with his dad by forcing him to share in lost childhood experiences. But on the set in San Francisco, Ted and Macaulay had their own behind-the-scenes games. What was hmm. going on, Mac? Yeah. Well, what I always beat him in chess and trivia pursuit in basketball. We were even. We were even. In chess, in yes, chess. but everything basketball, else. I made a few bad mistakes. <laughs> Danson made other mistakes on the ice. He actually could skate. I had more football pads on. I had, I was taped and glued together, and someone kind of pushed me out on the ice. I was terrified to do that. This guy can skate. Another scary moment is when Danson's character tries to teach his son the art of picking up women. He used to weigh 200 pounds. I'm not kidding. In reality, what kind of advice would Ted give Mac about alluring women? No, I would never be so, so presumptuous, actually. And could Macaulay give advice back? Um, no. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. That could have gone either way. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what. How to pick up girls. First, get them talking. Here, uh, pretend I'm some fabulous babe you want to hit on. Come on. Dad. Come on, stranger. Throw me a line. Uh, nice basketball. Oh, you think so? Yeah, where'd you get it? Where'd you get it? That's good, good, yeah. Disarm him with a compliment and then follow with a question. Now you got the lady's attention. Glenn Headley plays an undercover cop who falls for the dancing character. Headley has her own opinion about what young men should learn about women. I don't know what I would tell a little boy because I, I would just say, um, because I haven't really been in that position. Um, I actually, I was in that position once, but I, I haven't really, uh, you know, I don't know what I would say. I would just say be honest. What line of work are, are you in, Ray? Makes cakes. Decorates them. Mm, well, I took a class in that once. It was, it was uh, quite an art. So did he when he was in, in uh, college. Uh, and, and where did you go? Folsom U. It's a state institution. What do you learn from kids? I, I don't know. I feel condescending answering that question. I, it's, it's, it's such an equal thing when you act in front of a camera, you know, that... Uh, I think kids probably end up telling the truth more on film than act, than adults do. Us adults think that we can act periodically. I think the best thing I would learn, have learned from him is that little kids who are actors, when they're in their real life and they're not, um, you know, before their cameras, that it's really nice that they stay little kids. Macaulay may be a little kid, but he has knowledge beyond his years when it comes to his profession. So when it comes to acting tips from Ted, I'm not going to pick up anything. Usually, just did you know what I usually do. Sorry. <laughs> no, but no, I usually do what I you know what I usually do, which is pretty much my job. Don't go away. Up next on FYE, airheads raid the airwaves. Give us a real nice intro. And uh, don't say anything about us having a gun to your hand. And Bob Saget goes off the deep end 
for fatherhood. Oh my God, this is my real life and my TV life. I don't know who I am, I gotta call LaToya. When FYE returns. Welcome back to FYE, our men at Circus Vargas. And look at this, it is the ring master, the master of the ring, Hail O'Chief. <laughs> How are you? Pretty good. Good. What exactly does a ring master do? Well, apart from um, announcing the show, which is obvious, um, we also have the liaison between the circus and the, the public. So if there's any um, child that's missing or any public address system, but I think my main job really is to keep the tempo of the show going, make sure there's no dead spots. It's kind of like your job, it's a master of ceremonies. You keep go it moving. Keep it moving, make sure there's no any dead spots in the show, and that's about it, yeah. If someone's lights are on, would that be you? That would be me, yeah. I have to announce there's a car out there that's blocking a driveway, everything, you know, everything comes down to I me. just kind of didn't do my job by keeping it moving by talking about lights being on, huh? All right. We should probably get going right to, uh, you know the movie Airheads? Have you heard about this? No, I haven't. We have Brendan uh, Frazier. We have uh, Adam Sandler. Who else is in that? Uh, Joe Montana. Joe Montana's in that? Yeah. Oh, man. All right, it doesn't open until August. He's a great actor. He's a great actor. But the movie doesn't open until August, though. Uh -huh. But we have a nice behind-the-scenes look. OK. Let's check this out. Brendan Fraser, Joe Montana, and Adam Sandler have all let their hair down. Well, maybe not Adam. But they are all in a new rock and roll comedy called Airheads. The story is about an ambitious rock band that takes over a radio station to get their music played. Joe Montaigne thinks this storyline is believable. Crazier things have happened than this. I mean, look at Dog Day Afternoon. That happened. This is like Dog Day Afternoon on acid. Oh, man, look at the demos wasted! Brendan Fraser got a high playing the leader of the band. Any aspiration I've ever had to sing has been fulfilled. I mean, I can die now. I sang with white zombies. <laughs> hey, Marker. Joe Montaigne plays a cocky DJ who is a mixture of several different personalities. The way I've kind of seen him is I'm kind of like a Howard Stern melded with a little bit of Jimmy Buffett, with a little bit of Abby Hoffman, with a, a little bit of Joe Montaigne. Okay, who are you guys? The Lone Rangers? Saturday Night Live's Adam Sandler was happy to be acting with Joe, but this new relationship gave him a new addiction. Joe Montaigne is a guy, he's a great guy and, and totally cool. He got me hooked into smoking cigars. He brings cigars every, every night. Try this one. And I'm like, my mother's going to yell. Oh, it's good. Airheads gained authenticity by bringing in one of the legendary Spinal Tap players, Michael McKean, and real record executives to be extras. We're just some record company morons in a, in a, in a scene here. We're portraying ourselves, ourselves to, to fit people from the record companies. For Fraser, Airheads is a feature that shows rock and roll will never die. I think the point is, is that rock and roll pretty much always was and it pretty much always will be. And it's always going to be, turn that damn noise down! Hey, we forgot Coneheads, Deadheads, Head of Household. Speaking of Head of Household, who is the best doggone Head of Household in all of TV? Roseanne. Not Roseanne, it is Bob Saget. Hands down. We talked to Bob about Full House and some other things. You'll see. After six successful seasons on ABC's Full House, Bob Saget has developed a relationship with the cast that has helped shape him into a well-rounded dad on screen and off. I just love the kids. I love them, actually, as people. I mean, all the people that play my Candace Cameron, Jody Sweeten, and Ashley and Mary-Kate, I actually love them. Because it's weird. It's like some weird second family thing. It's very odd. I never thought this would happen, where you come become like, I'm a patriarch for these people here, and I just care about them. Also, I, as far as an actor goes and character goes, I put as much love as I would put into loving my own child. That's my daughter, DJ. 
DJ. Yes. Hey. What are you guys doing here? Saget appears to handle TV single parenthood with ease. He gained inspiration for the role from his earliest media memories. I sometimes flash back to people I watched as TV dads. Eddie's father, Bill Bixby, I thought was a great father on that show. I just loved that show. It was like the perfect blend of fatherhood and comedy and tragedy and you know, single father thing. And um, I don't know. There were a lot of them. We grew up with all these shows. I, I don't look at the, this show like being the Brady family. You know, that scares me. Go enjoy yourselves. Don't don't even think about me and. Get out of here before life passes you by. My father is, is actually probably one of the best fathers who's ever lived. My wife has a great father, too. But my dad is um, the sweetest, funniest person I've ever known. And people that meet him all say it. Straight, if you met him, he would be all over you. He'd want to be your best. You, you go to get gas, and he's there with the attendant for 20 minutes. You can't get him away from people. It's, if he wasn't so funny and charming, he would be frightening. You can go upstairs now. <laughs> Night. My advice is, uh, in real life, for, for real fathers, I don't know, survive. Do the best you can and have as much fun as you can. Like my, uh, uh, my seven-year-old was all over me yesterday. I brought her to work. I, I bring my kids to work sometimes. My four-year-old comes once in a while. So my seven-year-old, was on, she wouldn't get off of me. And it was annoying, you know. She was like pushing her elbow on your knee right where it hurts. And, right near, and uh, I said, will you, for a minute I said, will you please get off of me? And then I thought, you know what? She is not going to want to do this much longer. When she's 11 years old, She's going to be out of there. She's going to be playing with her friends. And when she's 16, she's not going to want to know me unless some friend of hers wants an acting part on something. <laughs> uh, up next, FYE spices things up with the flavor of the Caribbean. Welcome back to FYE. We're still here at Circus Vargas. Right here is one of the Bantu Warriors. How you doing? I'm doing right. A very impressive act, I am told. Haven't seen it yet, but I'm told it's very impressive. Yeah. You know, you guys do like over 600 shows a year. Yeah. Do you ever get just a little sick of the uh, circus music? Ever want to hear something else? Yeah, I like jazz. Jazz would be good? Yeah. How about some jazz down in the Caribbean? Yeah, it's OK. How about St. Lucia? Good too. All right, let's do it. Yeah. We're going to St. Lucia. Cuddled in the Caribbean lies the sleepy island of St. Lucia. The island's chief export, fruit, primarily bananas and coconuts. Chief import, tourism. Tourists come for the lush tropical surroundings and a variety of recreational activities. And in the spring, they come for jazz. to the St. Lucia Jazz Festival. The festival was originally designed as a marketing scheme to bring tourists to St. Lucia during the off-season. I think it's, it's something that was always there, and there were, there were always people in the Caribbean that, and also people that visit the Caribbean that love jazz, and basically someone got smart and started promoting here. It's necessary to promote the festival, and that promotion promotes St. Lucia at the same time. The plan worked. Not only have jazz fans flocked to the island, jazz musicians have also been drawn by the intoxicating mix of tropical beauty and music. This particular resort, you know, is beautiful. It's, it's fantastic and it's so, uh, you know, the scenery is wonderful and, you know, it can only be conducive to good music, really. Some of the musicians play St. Lucia because of the kind of fans it attracts. A lot of jazz people, but mostly interested persons who want to see what a festival like this is. 
and to experience it. And that's my kind of fan. I'm very glad to know that there are many more people that want to experience the live jazz experience of a jazz festival. It's different. <laughs> The mix of good music on a tropical island like St. Lucia is hard to resist. Veteran jazz musician Herbie Hancock didn't. He opened Herbie's Piano Bar at Sandals Resort. The resurgent popularity of jazz suits Hancock and the other musicians just fine. The people are eager to find out about jazz, but on the other hand, it can be an acquired taste for some people. Yeah. And well worth the effort. That was a nice little jazz break. Hey, looks like I'm next. That wasn't too bad of a wait, huh? You know why the time went by so fast, don't you? I brought a magazine to read, Us Magazine. I was reading my favorite section, Us Faces and Places. The celebrities turned out to honor actor Charlton Heston. Like. We're groupies. You choke, you choke groupies? We go, we go everywhere he goes. Any man, Moses, that can open the Red Sea, I gotta tip my hat to. I don't mean to impose my family on anyone at all, of course, but this is baby Chloe Camille, nine pounds two ounces. She's about a month old now. This is just a, she was a little tiny thing then. Like I say, only nine pounds two then, but she's about 13 pounds now, two feet long. And the doctor projects that Chloe will be 5'11". Um, at the premiere of City Slickers 2, apparently it was a very hot set. Well, you know, anytime you get into the desert, it's, it's hot, you know, and uh, it was 120 for a number of weeks, but, uh, you know, you get through it, and uh, I was 6'3 when this thing started. <laughs> it was very hot. It was the first about four weeks, it was 106 degrees, and you're out there six days a week. It was hard, but I guess we got out lucky, because I heard that movie Geronimo was 115 degrees, so I guess we had it easy. Come and see the movie. I like anything that Billy Crystal is in. I think it's very adorable. And that's a look at Us Magazine's Faces and Places. Art Man coming to you from Circus Vargas. Yes, and we have a few minutes left in the show. Why don't we roam around, enjoy the circus, see some of the sights, come on. Hey, look at this. Pony racing. Right. You, guys, you guys came to the pony races, huh? Yeah, we did. I got six bucks on the black one. Which one are you going for? <laughs> we just were on that one. We, we didn't do as good as that. I think that one's going to come in first. <laughs> Great. See, the joke is that they're not going to pass each other. See, they're all in the same order, no matter what. I got what. it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's wander. How you doing? Hi, fine. And you? I'm doing fine. I want a corn dog. One corn dog. Here it comes. Look at it. That's, uh, what is that, cornmeal on the outside of that dog? Yeah. <laughs> Makes it tasty? I say you eat and another need to look, no? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. How's the popcorn? Pretty uh, good? Okay, this is the best. You really think that's butter in there? Oh, man, look at this. Snake exhibit. Ah, oh, it's a dollar. Shoot, it's not in the budget. Well, enough of this midway. Let's go into the big top. Are you in some kind of ringmaster? Is there a club, a union? No. There isn't? No meetings? No, you just have to be outgoing and um, I don't know. I've seen ringmaster uh, quarterly, though. That's pretty good. <laughs> I have. Soccer playing dogs, do they have some official name? The dogs of soccer or some official title? Dupskis. Uh, Dupskis dogs. Dupskis dogs, that's right. I like it. It's nice. Hey, yeah? <laughs> no, I like it. Good name. Okay. Soccer playing dogs. Should we look at them again? Show them the dogs again. The, the white one, that's a fullback, right? <laughs> he's the youngest one. Is he yeah, a goalie? He's, he's a bulldog, English bulldog. No, but what position does he play? Or they just oh. kind of mix, they mix around. It's not yeah. as organized. Well, they're a little, it's not so organized. The goalkeeper stays, the rest, they go a little bit everywhere. What if people at home want to purchase a uh, wheel of death? Can they buy one of these? 
Don't try this at home. This is very dangerous. <laughs> All right. And you gotta you gotta have sequins and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Part of the show. <laughs> How does he bend like that? Man, how does your spine bend like that? Uh, it's a matter of, you know, before we do it. Was, this is, I'm like maxed out right here. Look at that. Look at this. No, no, I was just showing the people out there, there are no strings or anything. They just, no, no tricks, no mirrors. Yeah, it's just physical. That's it. We're out of time. Art. Oh. Oops. We're out of time. It's time to head back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed tonight's FYE. Uh, oh, real quick. I just want to thank uh, Mama Snagra for the Snickerdoodles. And that's it. And keep it tuned right here to E, the Entertainment News and Information Authority. <laughs>